CISOs, CTOs, and CIOs. You're in Event Meltdown, and now employees working from home has added to the information security challenge. Here to tell us all about this dilemma is Jason O'Reilly. Jason, welcome to scottcundall.com. Uh, good morning, Scotty. How are you keeping? Yeah, good, thank you. So, a couple of points to talk about here. Number one, this whole event meltdown. And number two, this issue about employees working from home and the cybersecurity risks they are in. Yeah, absolutely. I, you know, I think, um, I think COVID-19 has changed, uh, obviously, the world. Um, I think if you're, a, if you're a LinkedIn fan and you're somebody who follows social media as well, um, it's obviously consuming everything we do. Um, what has been very interesting is understanding how prepared organizations are to allow their workforces to work from home or how ill-prepared they are. Um, I think the challenge that we have in information security and cyber is that they're really not prepared. And, and when I say not prepared is, you must remember, a, you know, it, it was all great and fine to walk in the door at your office, um, sit down and be behind a, a very, very wealthy, uh, well-organized uh, perimeter. Um, the minute that COVID-19 started and everybody you know, went into lockdown, it changed the way that things worked. You know, now we've got to give you access to our applications, but I've got to do it from the safety of your home. So the perception of safe and walking in the door in the morning um, is no longer there. So it is a, it is a significant challenge for organizations um, and specifically people that look after information security and data security in their organizations to start figuring out how do we provide the organization with the same level of governance and certainty that their information is a lot, well, is, is just as protected as it is as if people were in the office. So what has happened is this has taken us all by surprise, this whole thing. I mean, let's face it. Um, theoretically, we should have been prepared for it. Most companies aren't. They have to prioritize. So you talk about the perimeter being van uh, perimeter vanishing. Now the perimeter has vanished. How do you prioritize? I mean, if your staff are working from home and you're the CISO or the CTO, how do you prioritize? What do you need to get right first? Well, I think, you know what, I, I'm, I'm very fortunate. You know, I happen to be on a, a group of about 72 CISOs and, you know, we've created a bit of a collaboration strategy. I think what we're starting to see is, is CISOs and the CISOs were prepared from a disaster recovery perspective in the event of small incidents happening. The organization wasn't prepared in the sense of, well, how do we now you know, secure this, this unseen challenge that we have where there is no longer a perimeter. What we found within organizations and what you will understand is that there's always a small percentage of people that have laptops and effectively work from home, right? And, and those, are, those are kind of easy because I'm not taking, you know, my entire organization's data. I'm actually just routing um, a few people. I mean, I say a few between 20 and 30% sometimes in organizations. I'm just routing them through virtual private networks or VPNs if we know it and, and giving them the same access and same experience. The problem with this is those, those infrastructure strategies were never planned for the entire organization to work from home. And that has now thrown organizations into a big, big, you know, into, into a big, big, big swirl. I think that the other challenge, of course, is, is, you know, it has been a significant challenge for organizations. Probably over the last nine months, we've seen a couple of really crazy themes coming around where, you know, a lot of investment in technology on premise has really um, been made on organizations. And, and that's why we talk about this event meltdown. There's lots and lots of events going on. There's lots of technology in organizations telling us that there are things happening, there are things coming, uh, and, and more importantly, trying to help the organization protect itself from primarily ransomware um, and also primarily from user communities clicking on you know, hyperlinks or URLs um, and putting in their passwords. So the, the biggest challenge we're seeing now is that there was a certain level of certainty being able to make investments in technologies that would protect people behind these firewalls and behind the perimeter. The problem that you have now is that with cloud, again, somebody else's hosting your infrastructure, with that advent and my applications living all over the world, for that matter, um, how do I do that securely? 
and how do I provide the staff with a seamless experience? The problem is, is that what used to be a small problem has now become a bigger problem. My network is no longer just behind this level of perimeter. My network is now somebody working from home. Okay, so the issue that we're facing right now or that these guys are facing is they have to act quickly. You don't have time to put weeks and months of planning. So let's talk a couple of solutions now. What do you do in such a short period of time to start you know, plugging these security holes? Well, well, look, so, so I mean, we've been on a, I mean, as our organization, we've been on a journey for the last three and a half years. Um, you know, this, this advent of uh, cloud information security and, and cloud protection um, is quite mature now. It's, it's four years down. So believe it or not, organizations working from home, organizations working from anywhere, regardless of device, regardless of infrastructure, um, have the capability to purchase what we term as microservices. So you can go today and you can switch on an entire network to enable your business. And this is a great, great opportunity for entrepreneurs, right? You don't have to go and invest in servers and, and crazy things at the end of the day that, that cost the organization a lot of money. You can actually just switch on a service. So what this, uh, I believe COVID-19 has done, not only globally, but really I think for, for Africa and, and any other, um, any other country that, that has been struggling on how do they adopt cloud or not is, you have the ability to switch on these services with vendors that have been doing this for the last four years. What has happened is, is organizations have just made really crazy investments. So they've had to justify those investments. Whereas today we're saying, well, you know, we're, we're all waiting for customers to come out of these investment uh, loopholes. You know, we, we buy software and hardware for three to five years. Well, they're now coming out of that and going, okay, there's got to be, there's got to be cheaper options. There's got to be safer options. Um, and they're able to switch on these services. And by the way, these services are, if not better, um, but far more agile than where they have been before. All that COVID-19 has done is it has totally escalated that strategy. The challenge we have is mindset. The challenge we have is, but I've always done it this way. Um, you know, now I've got to change my mind. And let's not worry about the CISOs and the CIOs and the CTOs. Let's talk about the board of executives and the members. I mean, these, you know, our biggest challenge in information security has been convincing those organizations and those boards and those board members that actually it's all about their data. So if you're really taking a data approach to protecting your organization, you'll achieve a number of mandates. You'll achieve your governance mandates, you'll achieve your audit mandates, you'll achieve all of these really great things. The challenge has been is changing mindset. What COVID-19 done has gone, you either change your mindset, your mindset, or you sink. So again, I think that has really helped not only how people look at how they're spending their money, um, where they've spent their money. Um, I think when we come out of this, because I do believe it is going to be a matter of when we come out of this, I think we'll see a very, very different way that people make their investments into the, into the future, specifically how they look at their risks. And it is going to be about the data. It isn't about the infrastructure. It is about who's, you know, it's, it's about who's connecting to my network, where they're coming from. Are they trusted or aren't they trusted? Are they allowed to use the data or aren't they allowed to use the data? And if that is the fact, then you allow them. It's called zero trust. Um, and there's a big drive around some of these critical mandates. But if we can just, and again, I think COVID's helped us do that, is if you look at how you prioritize your investments and you look at a risk-based, a data-centric strategy, um, you will really understand that making the investments in the right place is what you need to do. The, the way that organizations used to protect themselves, um, unfortunately, that has changed. Okay, so to finish off, just imagine I'm a board right now and uh, I'm one of those boards that you're trying to convince, change of mindset, like you say, and they're panicking right now and you've got sort of three minutes to tell them the key fundamentals right now. And a lot of these guys are non-technical. So, you know, the, the zero trust, that sort of thing is, is, is kind of a bit for, foreign to them. So just imagine I'm a board of directors right now and you've got just a couple of minutes to sell this to me. What would you say to them? You have an opportunity right now to change the way that you've spent your money over the last 20 years, specifically with regards to information security. 
there are opportunities out there for you to make the changes, to help your CISOs, CIOs achieve the mandates that they need to. All that you need to think about is the current services that are available with the advent of uh, the cloud with the advent of modern security, with the advent of artificial intelligence. One of the biggest challenges uh, we're seeing in organizations, small, medium, and large, is everybody talks about the shortage of information security skilled resources. Well, now's the time, if you look at where organizations are, to look at platform-based strategies, risk-based strategies, database strategies that can help your people achieve more um, and end up costing you less. The way that you do that is you enable those organizations to make the right investments in microservices, in the right platforms, and they'll provide exactly the same protection as what you're experiencing today. Take nothing away from the experience from the user. The user will experience exactly the same thing, if not better services than where you are today. The difference is the investment in TIN, the investment in infrastructure will change. And I think that is a critical component is when we look at agile organizations and where they are, um, it is about trying to figure out how do I bring agile into my business? If we look at the disruption in business over the last, also the last eight, nine years, um, the biggest challenge has been is everybody understands organizations are um, the Titanic in order for them to change, in order for them to move, it's gonna take them a long time. And that's why these entrepreneurial and these entrepreneurial flaring companies are starting to eat away their breakfast. It's time to adopt um, a, a strategy at the end of the day that enables those really clever people you've employed, give them the right information at the right time so that they can make the right decisions and protect your organizations. Jason, thank you. Um, outstanding summary. Just very quickly, um, how do you uh, offer your services? I mean, are you willing to just take a call if a CTO, CISO wants to contact you? Give us your phone number, give us your email address, give us your website, just very quickly, just so they can have a conversation with you around the current crisis and they can just feel a little bit better about the situation. Yeah, absolutely. Um, our website is uh, uh, obviously wwwadvanced intellect.co.za um, I can be reached on plus two seven seven double two eight one double five seven zero my email address is j a y s o n dot o r e i l y o r e i double l y at advance a t v a n c e dot co dot z a um, also our website will redirect you to our uh, obviously just to email uh, but i'm available um <laughs> let's be honest you said it earlier on Unreal. what's a weekend <laughs> what's a weekend um we are available um you know we've got a team of people uh, that are obviously available um you know again we're here to advise we're here to help customers understand the challenges they face We've got some fantastic vendors um, that are making licenses available free of charge for a period of time for customers to experience it. Um, and, you know, one of the things that we've seen with COVID is the goodwill of organizations that really care about what organizations are doing. It's coming out, right? And, uh, you know, we're very fortunate. We've, um, we changed our strategy probably about nine months ago to looking at vendors that care about our region, care about our country, care about what our organizations are doing. And uh, we're on, I think we're on a great wicket. Um, it's just about helping those organizations. So we're very fortunate with our vendors. And uh, again, we're happy to help customers walk through the process. And I promise you, if we can't do it, we will get you in touch with a community member that can do it. Jason O'Reilly, thank you so much for joining me on scottcandle.com. Thank you, Scott.